Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shana Park, your host for Money Talks. My guest is Nieva Sumer. She is a Senior Marketing Director with World System Builder. Welcome to the show, Nieva. Aloha, everybody. Thank you for having me and giving us this opportunity to, you know, um, have a good time with you guys, hopefully. Yes, thank you for being on. And, you know, for those of, or for everyone who doesn't know you, please tell me more about yourself. All right. So um, prior to joining World System Builder, I actually had three jobs, Shana. I worked for a local high school here for 17 years as a part-time ELL teacher. So I helped the um, new immigrants in our high schools. And I was also um, associate for a wireless industry for a little over nine years. On top of that, I was also a certified court interpreter of the state of Hawaii courts. I'm also married for more than 25 years. I have two beautiful, <laughs> two beautiful children and I have two grandkids now. My youngest uh, a grandson just turned, uh, he's going to be three months uh, oh, this month. Yeah. Yes. And you just look so hip and fantastic. <laughs> but it's, Thank you. <laughs> It seems like you had a lot of hats. You did many different things. So, you know, what got you started in finances and how did you start um, Maui Financial Center? So actually, I first, um, I rejoined the company in 2020 during the pandemic. You know, we were on lockdown and, you know, like so many people, uh, I didn't know where my next paycheck is going to come back. You know, I didn't want to depend on the unemployment checks that we were receiving at the time. So I figured, um, you know, find another side hustle, right? So that, uh, find an extra income so that I can support our growing family. And uh, during the pandemic, one of my mom's good friends, uh, Atitelma from Hawaii, reached out to me through Facebook and she didn't really mention anything about, about the business. You know, she just said, hey, I didn't come and, you know, learn about our workshops. You know, we're not doing anything anyway. There's no school. So I said, okay. And then so when I joined the workshops on Zoom, of course, um, I, I was thinking, oh, wow, I don't know anything about finances at all. And actually before my three jobs, I actually worked for the banking industry for seven years. And I said, oh my goodness, the things that I talk about in the workshop, I've never learned any of that when I was working for the bank. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, so what else is there in this company? And then she went on to say, actually, this is also a business opportunity for you. And without knowing that I was actually licensed, a life producer licensed already before she reached out to me. So she presented the compensation plan and whatnot. And I said, wow, uh, I can actually learn for myself and then share what I learn. And, you know, I can um, come and earn extra income on my time and, you know, help others as well. And when I joined the business in way back in, in two years ago, I just wanted to earn extra thousand dollars, you know, so that I can replace one of my jobs, you know, because, you know, I've always worked three jobs, even when my kids were growing up. So I kind of missed out most of their childhood. And I think that's the cycle of families here where, you know, we each have two, three jobs so that we can raise our kids. Right. But, you know, two and a half years later, man, I'm here. Um, we opened the Maui Financial Center. And of course, with the help of our, you know, mentor, Bibi Rosugitan, and of course, Stephen Lee. And two, two months ago, I stepped away from my three jobs, Shana. So I'm just so grateful to be a part of this company. You just have such an amazing success story, Nieva. And I mean, for most of us who do live in Hawaii, it's not common that we have one full-time job. A lot of people have multiple full-time jobs. And to hear you say that you only started up in the pandemic, which is 2020, and to see where you're at now, it just proves that, you know, whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve. And I love hearing, you know, your stories and your past employments that you had, because, I mean, you're right, whatever we you know, learn through our jobs or sometimes during school, it's not um, the entire picture of finances. And I think it's your great example of, you know, putting yourself out there to learn firsthand of what you need to know to provide for your family. 
Yes, I agree. I totally agree, Sheena. So with the Maui Financial Center, um, I know you have a lot of, you know, business associates over there and uh, you're born and raised there or you, you know, grew up most of your life there, right? Um, I was actually born and raised in, uh, from the Philippines. And then my family moved here when I was, you know, a freshman in high school. I was originally from Hawaii. So my husband is the one from Maui, but we've been here since 2003. So pretty much, yeah. Wow. We've spent most of our, my, my children spent most of their lives here in Maui. Yeah. I see. And, you know, with what's going on in Maui right now, and I'm sure everyone has heard about the tragedy that happened. Um, you know, did any of your family, friends, um, business associates get affected by the fire? Um, uh, yeah, actually, Sheena, um, we, our Maui Financial Center is growing. We have a lot of teammates. And unfortunately, 11 of our teammates actually lost their homes in Lahaina. And many, many, many friends and families, um, immediate families and close friends um, lost their homes. And, you know, it's, it's just so no words to express, you know, what they're going through right now. So it's just so um, heartbroken. And we're just so heartbroken. What's happening with you know, my heart is so broken because we, you know, work alongside with each other too. So when we all heard the news of what's going on in Maui, we couldn't help or I couldn't help but think about you folks. And, you know, I would love for you to share more um, in detail of, you know, what's going on with your your business associates, your friends that have been affected. Yeah. So when we heard actually on that Tuesday night when um you know the fire was going on in Lahaina we were not even aware you know we we have a full house here at our financial center we were having a BPM for our RSSA you know on how to optimize our social security benefits and then we just hear sirens and our phones were going off you know from friends and family because there were three fires going on at the same time you know in Lahaina, Kihei and Pukalani and you know our families our friends are you know calling us they're being evacuated and of course you know we were just oh my gosh and you know there were eight guests that actually didn't make it and you know they we just thought that you know it's because of you know strong winds you know uh high wind advisory and whatnot but then later on when we we, we see and um you know on our social social media and whatnot we were just so speechless and you know we're just caught in shock you know it's like oh my god it, and it just happened so fast uh mm -hmm. so the next day after the fire I know one of our associates, uh, she's a veteran, Sharon, immediately went to a volunteer at um, the biggest uh, shelter here um, near our office, which is the uh, Maui War Memorial Gymnasium. And from there, you know, we saw a lot of displaced families who were in distraught and, you know, just hysterical of, you know, losing everything, right? And, you know, in the next couple of days, our teammates, um, went to volunteer. Uh, actually, we were asked, uh, our office were asked by um, a few of our National Guard friends and first responders to go and interpret for our Filipino families who were um, housed in, in the um, War Memorial. And from those listening to their stories, men, like I said, Shana, no words can express what they went through. So um, a few of the stories was, you know, an elder, elderly couple, they were already maybe even older than my mom and my dad, you know, they're like close to 70s. And um, they were in the water for six hours before they could even be rescued. Um, they had to jump out of their car to escape the uh, fire. And Nana said, you know, every time the wave would come, you know, they were holding on, she was holding on to the rocks and they were slippery and she would be swept back into the ocean and um, her children would swim back for her so that they could bring her back and hang on to the, um, the rocks again. And at one point, you know, six hours is a long time for someone so old, right? To hang in there, you know, she didn't, you know, they're hungry, they're cold. And at one point she said, and actually, she said many times she told her children to just let her go, 
just save their energy. She's she's old enough. She lived her life, and to just uh, you know save themselves. But of course, her children, you know, wanted her to stay because they said, "Mom, we need you. We still need you." So yeah, so that's one of the um, stories that I heard. And of course, Julius, uh, he moved here from Colorado four months ago because he couldn't handle the um, um, temperature in Colorado and. But he's by himself. He has no family, and he had he suffered burns. He, I think, even broke his um uh, leg because he jumped out of the house just to escape the fire. He couldn't go through the front door, and you know he didn't have any phones. He didn't, he lost everything pretty much, Shayna. And we told him, hey, you know, did you? Because our team were, was willing to you know contribute. And buy him like a um you know at least a, like a burner phone not burner phone but like a, a prepaid phone you know but he said no I don't I don't need anything he said like ah, I'm just so grateful that I'm happy you guys donated to someone who needs his, need needs it more and it's just so I, I I don't know it's just so uplifting that with someone who lost everything and is just so grateful and so positive. And just his faith with God, he he was just um, so grateful. Um, and then, of course, um, my my cousin, uh, two of my husband's um, aunties, they are my mother in law's sisters. Um, they lost their home, and uh, my cousin's husband was actually working uh, during the fire, and he tried to go to my family. Now, my auntie and my uncle are both um, using a walker. And then my cousin is in a wheelchair. And of course, my, my niece, she's only 10, you know, so it, she didn't know what to do. So what my cousin did is he just left his car in the middle of the highway because he was stuck in traffic and he ran. And, and he said he, he didn't even know how, how did he get to his house or how, how fast he ran because it was uphill, right? He was coming from Hyatt Hotel and he said, I I didn't know how fast I was running or how did I get to our house. I just, I just um, needed to get to the house and save, you know, your manang and you know my auntie and uncle and my niece. So uh, it's just, you know, and and then we couldn't, you know, it, it didn't even help that we couldn't um, get a hold of them for how many days because they, you know their signal was you know on and off. But yeah, it's just so you know, sorrowful and um, just so heart, I'm just, we we're just so heartbroken, you know, but yeah, um, um, when, yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, they're just all the stories that you just had shared right now, I mean, many different perspectives, but um, a lot of loss is what I hear. And, you know, with the second guy that you mentioned from coming from Colorado, it, he just puts a really different perspective, right, of being grateful for life. And sometimes we lose track of just the simple things. And hearing that message really just gave me chicken skin because, I mean, every day is a blessing to be alive and breathing and being able to see the sunrise, right? And, you know, I'm very um, grateful and happy to hear that, you know, although your family has lost their home, that they're all okay as well. And, you know, I wanted you to go further into, um, you know, their situation and um, all the amazing support that has been pouring in on you folks. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're just so grateful, Shana, that um, even if we had 11 teammates that, you know, lost their homes and many, many friends and families lost their homes, that no one was hurt. Uh, you know, no one got hurt in the fire. Um, although right now, I know as as, as of today, there's a, um, over a hundred that's been confirmed dead, and 850 are still are still unaccounted for or missing. Um, but right now, everyone are I mean, they're not okay. As for, at the moment, a lot of families are still you know a lot of the displaced families are still staying at many hotels and you know our convention centers and whatnot. Um, but you know we, we're just overwhelmed with you know everyone all over the world you know including our you know ohana and Kauai team actually our um uh, our wsb community has you know decided to donate you know uh, 
a minimum of you know ten thousand dollars with you know from our tickets with our um, upcoming um, convention right in Hawaii and of course you know um, our parent companies as well right but you know it's just um so um what is this just heart heartwarming to see all the community coming together you know uh, our communities were did not wait for FEMA or Red Cross or outside help to start helping the displaced families you know act People, regular people went to, you know, Lahaina right after the fire to, you know, give them food, you know, supplies and just to make sure everyone is everyone is OK. And when we were uh, volunteering at the War Memorial, you know, actually there was a sign up sheet before you could even go in and as a volunteer and man, there was like two, three pages of, you know, waiting list for volunteers to be called, you know, and it's just feels so good, you know, that, you know, even though this strategy, it just happened that many of us come together and want to help in any way that we can, you know, give as much as we can, especially our time, right, to those displaced families. And yeah, and we are just so grateful. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone around the world that who uh, would watch this uh, this episode later on that, you know, we are just overwhelmed with aloha. And, you know, we're just so grateful. And what this strategy taught each and every one of us is to just be grateful even of the little things because, you know, life can just so happen so quickly. Life is just so fragile, right? And the basic stuff that we take for granted every little day, uh, every single day right now, those are just so valuable for the displaced families, right? And, you know, we, we can, you know, offer help. We may not be able to help so much as far as finances and whatnot, but just be, you know, um, lending a shoulder, just to listening to their stories and just giving them that hope that better days are coming and help is on the way. And th there is hope that there's going to be a better tomorrow for them. Yes. And I 100% agree with you. And, you know, hearing everything that you're sharing right now, too, you're really getting out there and just showing up. And I think that's what matters most right now for Maui, showing up for the people of Maui and showing up, you know, to help rebuild what was lost. And I know um, our CEO from the WSB Ohana Financial Center um, went out to go visit you guys in Maui. And I know we've been gathering a lot of supplies or what's needed. So can you please share about, you know, um, your business associates that were affected and, you know, how they're doing right now and just share about them, please. I know they have an, ama uh, an amazing story. Yeah, so um, three of the families that um, lost their homes actually came when our CEO, Ben Young and Karen Young came, um, I think that was two days ago. And, you know, and just looking at them, losing everything that they have, they are still so positive and, you know, gracious. And, you know, we're just so happy to see them. You know, I didn't think that they would show up with, you know, everything that happened to them, but they came and they were just so grateful with the things that were donated to them uh, from the team. And of course, some um, monetary donation as well to help them get started with their lives. But yeah, they're doing okay. They they don't know when they're gonna, because some of them lost their homes and at the same time lost their um, livelihood as well because their, their, their workplace burnt down. But, you know, they're just so, positive and optimistic that, you know, they, something happens for a reason. And then, you know, as long as they keep their faith in God and to their community and to other people that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. So right now they are, you know, staying in the hotels, you know, just uh, taking it day by day. We know that with everyone's support around the world, our teams and the community, you know, we will see, um, we will restore Lahaina again in its um, glory, right? But, yeah. Absolutely. And I know too, when, you know, we had a few conversations earlier and hearing you share um, that, you know, one thing is that we're in control of what's going on in, in regards to our emotions. And although during this devastating time, you know, I know your team members um, or your business associates have been, you know, rising up and, really 
bringing that positive energy and doing what they can because I know um you mentioned although they were affected by the fire like they're still showing up for meetings and to learn and to you know get themselves back on their feet yes yes so when um our CEO Ben Young came you know I was surprised our our financial center was packed with our team members and that's how that shows their commitment to the business, their commitment to themselves, right? To better their lives and then change other people's lives as well. And, you know, one particular story of Chad, um, he is, he was only one month, one week in the business uh, before the Lahaina uh, fire started. And, you know, he had to live in his car for a couple of days because he couldn't go back to Lahaina. He was undecided when the fire happened. But the very next day, he brought in a friend and, you know, we shared the campaign and he had a new business associate. And, he, you know, to him, he said, you know, Ate, there's there's it's there's no time to be depressed or feel sorry. I, I can't take, you know, everything back. I can't take it back. But we have to look forward to a better tomorrow, to a better future. And I have to make sure that I work hard and to strive to succeed again because there's a lot of people that you know depending on me he said so it's just an inspiring story you know and the human spirit you know the, you know how they survived all that and still processing what had happened to them but still very optimistic yes and you know the common theme with everything you're sharing right now is positivity and helping you know the being so willing to help others themselves and just to coming together as a community which is really beautiful and i know um you know, there are strangers all throughout the world too that, you know, are helping through this disaster. And um, I'm, I want to say Japan, they donated, donated, correct me if I'm wrong, $2 million to Maui? I have, I, I have no confirmation of that just yet. I'm, I'm not sure. I know. I believe it's $2 million and I know Korea has done so as mm. well. But I also know, you know, like, you mentioned our parent companies, Aegon and WFG, they gave a hundred thousand and they're matching up to 250,000, which, you know, I think is so beautiful because this is a really big corporation. And, you know, I know they reached out to you guys personally as well, right? Uh, I, I believe they reached out to our CEO, Ben Young and our EMD Baby Rose. Yes. Goodness. Yeah. And it's just really, really nice to see too, you know, again, togetherness. Um, and like you mentioned too, with the um, with our events coming up, there are donations going towards that. But as of right now, uh, Nieva, um, please share. You know what else is needed in Maui right now as a whole. What what can you know the public do to come together and help? Right now, of course, um, a lot of prayers, a lot of love for our community. But you know, just um, to uh, just come and uh, donate maybe like what what the displaced families need now is um the consensus is they need uh, monetary support because one they don't have anything and many of them lost their jobs as well and they don't know when they can go back to work and of course you know basic necessities such as you know basic things that we take for granted like you know towels blankets men you know toothbrushes toothpaste soap shampoos it's just you know, it's like things that we don't even pay attention to sometimes, but now it's just, like I said, so valuable to them, right? And just to, um, you know, just sending all those um, messages, especially in social media, right? To just be positive, you know, keep on rooting for those families that better days are coming. And, you know, um, just um, sending donations like water and stuff, uh, food necessities. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. That would be a lot of help for them. Beautiful. Thank you for, you know, sharing because, you know, you do have firsthand experience right now and hearing your stories and hearing, you know, what you guys are all overcoming right now is just, I'm at a loss of words. And, you know, is there anything else you'd like to share, you know, regarding the Maui um, and everything that's going on in Lahaina before we wrap up? Uh, right now, um, they have started um well our uh, in law enforcement has um opened the lahaina road and um i know for uh, many of our friends and family has gone back to their homes and they started to just 
you know, just clean up the area, I guess, just to make, um, make it, uh, sorry, just to, uh, I guess, make the, clean them up so that when, and when it, when it, the, it is time for them to rebuild their house or whatever, then, you know, it's faster for them. And I know a lot of the churches and, you know, businesses and nonprofit organizations are there constantly every day delivering food for them at the hotels and, yeah, and it's just so awesome to see the community still coming together for them because, you know, it's, it's not, Lahaina is not going to be rebuilt and we don't know, maybe not even in a month or two. So we are just so overwhelmed with a lot of um, love coming from everyone. And of course, the community is just um, um, so our first, first responders, our National Guards are there to make sure everyone is safe and that, you know, the constant food and supply goes to our displaced families. So yeah, it's just so like I said, it's it's so like heartwarming to see that you know with this strategy, uh, with this strategy that happened to Lahaina, that you know the the people are still optimistic, they're still positive, you know, and we're just a big uh, big family here in Maui. So um, that's what we are doing, and even us here at our um, uh, office, we um, we are helping, you know, anyone who we need to, you know, because a, a lot of them are now looking for a home. So we have um, helped many of our um, teammates and non-teammates alike at the shelter to fill out their, you know, rental assistance or housing applications. So we help with um, what we can. And then I know we've been just passing out the inf important information, like, you know, when the Mexican consulate was here or the Philippine consulate was here to help the displaced families who lost their alien cards and passports uh, during the fire. So just, you know, sharing those important informations for our displaced families um, so that we can help in any way we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Nieva. And, you know, I really hope I can um, see you soon in Maui as well. And, you know, just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart um, for being on the show and sharing all the stories that you've been experiencing. Um, it's really, really beautiful to see everyone come together and to bring hope for Maui during this devastating time. Thank you so much for being on the show, Nieva. Thank you too, Shana, and for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope to see you all at the next episode of Money Talks. I am Shana Park, a Gen Z inspiring lives of liberties. Thank you.